Welcome back, everyone. I'm Davin Chitwood, sales executive here at Kirkham Iron Tech. And here we have our fearless founder and CEO, Tom Kirkham. And uh, I have a quick question for you. And it's something that's act actually asked quite often. Um, but why does Kirkham Iron Tech require EDR? And when I say EDR uh, in the term of that stands for endpoint detection and response tool, sometimes people call it M or XDR, MEDR, but why does Kirkham Iron Tech require that specific tool? You're, that's a great question, Devin. And uh, it wasn't always the case in the company. I think it was about five years ago we started uh, requiring it, probably roughly around the time the NSA was breached. I, I really okay. don't remember, but it, it's been several years ago. And we offered antivirus and EDR. And okay. the forward thinking clients got the EDR, but it wasn't even half of our client base. And we started seeing more incidences of ransomware, successful ransomware attacks. And quite simply, EDRs, that class of product, is the only effective defense, besides training, mm -hmm. continuous cybersecurity awareness training, it's the only way to protect against uh, ransomware attacks. And we just thought it was too big of a risk. You know, our clients create threat vectors to us and mm -hmm. by extension to all the other clients. So we have a responsibility to defend ourselves as well as our clients. And couple that with the fact that it's the only effective day in and day out that will stop uh, ransomware attacks and other malicious items much, much more effectively than antivirus. Antivirus is 30 plus year Aided. old technology. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just not, it's just not adequate in, in the modern threat environment we all live in. And it wasn't just the NSA tools. It was other nation states, cyber warfare tools were being used by hackers, criminal hackers against mm -hmm. us. And, uh, we made it a requirement that all of our clients had to use it. We didn't lose a single client over it. It does cost more than antivirus. There, mm -hmm. That's there's no doubt. We took it one step further. And we say, what is the best in class EDRs? Because now we're seeing the, the traditional antivirus vendors start using that phrase for their products, implying that it's just as good as, say, Sentinel-1 or CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact of the matter is they aren't best in breed. They might be best in breed on antivirus, <laughs> but antivirus is pretty much a commodity these days. Yes. And no matter what, no matter what on antivirus, keep this in mind. And this has been true since day one. Antiviruses, like each vendor updated the signature file at different paces once a new virus signature was detected, right? And some of it was due to technical difference in the antivirus package, but say Norton would catch it right away, you know, within a few hours or a day. So you got to download the mm -hmm. virus signature file, which isn't smart anymore. Uh, and then McAfee may take a month. So some people would say, well, a friend of mine said McAfee was better. And I put it on there and it found a bunch of stuff that Norton did, didn't catch. So people get it in their mind that McAfee's better. But in reality, if you reverse that process, Norton would probably have found stuff that McAfee missed because they, it, it's a lot of different reasons for it, but it just wasn't that effective. And the same thing with a new virus, you yeah. know, Norton puts her, they'll put one virus definition in within hours. McAfee takes three months. Well, another virus, the, those timeframes may be reversed and it has to do with technical reasons and, and things like that, but just simply relying on comparing an actual code signature of a malicious item is no longer effective. The base part of a ransomware attack has no virus, period. It's all built into Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Office. So EDRs use cloud uh, artificial intelligence or neural net to detect storylines of attacks in real time. And it doesn't have to download anything. It's always talking back to the mothership for lack of a better word, right? And, uh, and so it can respond much more effectively 
to brand new threats, it responds much more effectively to, well, it's not just ransomware. All of these cyber warfare tools are being used against us. And those are designed specifically to evade detection. Okay. So uh, by going by the storyline, you know, what's happening on the computer is, is this the prelude to a ransomware or other type of attack. And so it knows the storyline. Mm -hmm. It learns new storylines as it's updated for all practical purposes within uh, instantly, but within minutes anyway. Uh, so for example, if it detects a new type of storyline or a new type of threat, say in Sydney, Australia, every other EDR agent, every other computer protected by that EDR within minutes knows what to look for all over the world all over the world and it's some really cool technology and uh you know years ago we made security job one mm -hmm. and and i don't think your company is secure i don't think you have a job security job one culture environment if you don't have edr uh, i can make a really good case for not providing continuous cybersecurity awareness training uh, and uh, password managers, although we don't yet require those two things, you know, yeah. that requires the, the training and the password manager that requires a commitment on the client part the to fulfill mm -hmm. the use of them. You know, we have clients that think, you know, they make this managerial decision <laughs> that, yeah, we need to get cybersecurity awareness training. They put it in, but then they don't manage it. You've got to, yeah. you've got to look at how everyone's scoring and then provide coaching, you know, to get your company up to that green level, you know, it's, you know, it takes everybody's score, and then gives you a number, and you're either red, yellow, or green, and everybody needs, the whole company needs to be in green, but everybody needs to be yeah. in green, not, you know, because one person can mess the whole thing up, and so if you don't have that coaching commitment, and you're not walking the talk, I talk about that over and over and over again, you know, if you're exempt, you know, you're the owner or the manager or the president or whatever, and you make that decision and then you exempt <laughs> yourself, well, you're not walking the talk. That's just yeah, one example setting the standard. of not walking the talk. You've got to set the, and, and let me tell you this, uh, that, 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 that president or the one making the decision more often than not is one of those that are most likely to let it in. Because they're doing so mm -hmm. many different things on the computer. They're looking at everything from this 50,000 foot view. They're, they're thinking strategy and finance and uh, HR and ops and just everything it is that is what you have to do to run a company. And uh, that creates a threat vector there if you're not taking the training. And even InfoSec professionals take cybersecurity awareness training. These are yep. professional criminals. You know, we've all seen the emails with broken English and bad grammar <laughs> and bad graphics. It's not like that, that is the exception these yeah. days. These days they are spot That's on perfect. damn good looking. And now with the yep. advent of artificial intelligence, it's even more critical that your firm has EDR and a skilled security team backing you up. Because in the past, a typical ransomware attack was done at volume. They have an email list. They don't know anything about the company. They're just looking for conversion rates, you know, yep. of victims. And uh, now with artificial intelligence, and we're seeing this right now as we speak, and this is March of 2023, <laughs> we're seeing this as we speak, and it's going to accelerate rapidly. And they're going to be able to take AI, for example, to build out a ransomware attack. And instead of it being a generic phishing attack, where, you know, it's got an attachment from into it, Click you know, on QuickBooks it. or whatever, says these are outstanding invoices, we're going to turn off your QuickBooks. And somebody in accounting gets it and opens it up. Now they're going to be able to search LinkedIn and other databases and, and understand the hierarchy of the company, what the company does, who their vendors might be. And they're going to be spear fishes, which means it's going to be targeted. And in the past, that took human beings to gather intelligence. They, the hackers would only initiate 
manual intelligence gathering and manual hacks against companies that was worth their time to invest human energy in. You know, they, it's easy money to make, it's point and click yeah. to make a normal ransomware attack, even with the high tech tools they're using now. Uh, but now they're going to start automating and they already have started automating uh, these uh, targeted attacks. And it's a, it's a real big game changer, really no, is. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, AI and how cyber threats are changing because that goes into perfectly what we're getting at is why we're requiring these advanced tools, these tools like an endpoint detection response tool, simply because cyber threats are changing and they are advancing rapidly. And if you are a business owner, if you have a company, you have to change and adapt with the cyber threats. And hopefully you're ahead of the curve, which is if you have an EDR in place, you are uh, above or ahead of the curve of most other companies that, of course, don't have it in place. And with these advanced threats, AI technology coming in, uh, these conversion rates are going to shoot up out of the roof for these cyber attackers. Uh, EDR, uh, we require it, but soon it's going to be required everywhere. That's, that's my my take. I believe what probably the next year or two, it's going to be absolutely a necessity for every company. I would absolutely agree with that. You're going to be yeah. required either by the industry that you're in. They're going to say, you've got to have an EDR, and they'll yep. probably give you a list of five to choose from. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, pit, we chose Sentinel-1, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, CrowdStrike is also better. And if you hadn't heard those names before, it's because you, they don't, they're not on the shelves no. at Office Depot. You can't download it from Amazon because it requires professionals to configure, deploy, monitor, respond, mitigate, remediate, and investigate yep. security events. Because, you know, a typical ransomware attack, it may stop the ransomware attack, but it did, it missed Still damage done or it, it missed uh, the, the attack deploying server backdoors. Yeah. It, and, that, and I hadn't seen that on our stuff, but I, I'm sure it's happened before. Yeah. Um, but uh, that that's a great point, and I I think your time frame is pretty accurate. That's what I yeah. I think that by the end of this year we're going to see everyone is probably going to see very good automated AI generated targeted attacks, and and other things that we can't imagine. Yeah, you know because uh, this this advent of AI, especially with NLP, you know natural language processing, Chat mm -hmm. GPT, uh, this is a seminal event. And we have yet to understand how all the good guys can use it, much less how all the bad guys can use it. Because yeah. keep in mind, that nation states, these are professional military cyber warfare units. These criminals are professional criminals. And the terrorist organizations, the hacktivists, they all are very skilled these days. It's We're years and years past hackers doing it for bragging rights yeah so there's political motivation activism uh but by far it's financial that's that's yeah. the biggest hacking group is the criminal hackers but then you've got nation states that may have a bone to pick with you, you know, like russia has a bone to pick with all the members of nato over ukraine yeah. iran north korea so, um, it, it, the good news is, so I don't want to get everybody down, right? <laughs> yeah. And on a good note, and on a good note, the good news is we, the, the things that we deploy and, and, and our, our, um, other, you know, our other, uh, companies, uh, any Mike, uh, managed services, security, managed security services provider, uh, they're, they're, they should be doing best in class. Mm-hmm. Uh, best of breed products, procedures, techniques, understanding what NIST cybersecurity framework is, uh, knowing what the Gartner research and attack MITRE research, the latest results from that, uh, because you have to rip and replace. That's about yep. that continuous adaptation that you're talking about. And that's also a best practice. You, you have to stay on top of threat intelligence of all types and respond appropriately you know do a risk analysis okay that threat because it's a fire hose <laughs> of information yeah. right yeah you know i spend five or ten hours a week trying to keep up with it <laughs> and uh and i can't i mean it's just it's overwhelming i i have to 
narrowly focus on what's relevant to our company and our clients. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we don't deal a lot with uh, depart. Well, we don't deal at all with Department of Defense, but they have special needs. And uh, I kind of push those off to the side. But yeah, con continuous threat intelligence is also a best practice. Yeah. Uh, I do want to uh, let you all know if you do want to hear more about uh, chat GPT or how AI is going to affect um, cyber threats in the future, or um, even hear more about what creating a, a cybersecurity or security first culture in your company, um, ha how that happens or how to even start that. Um, tune in. We're going to do some more videos about that, but um, thanks for tuning in today and we will talk to you all soon.